Welcome to this gentle restorative class. I decided to pull out the chair. Now, really these blue chairs behind me that you see could be used for a lot of these poses. In fact, I'm gonna start off in that pose or in that particular uh, piece of furniture. However, you know, if it's very cushiony, once we switch to other poses where the hands are down on the seat of the chair, it's too cushy and it can be a little unmanageable for the wrist, at least for me. So I'm gonna start off in the blue chair and then I'm gonna to switch to this card table chair. Obviously you can use a kitchen or dining room chair as well. Um, so just grab one, whatever's close, whatever's available and we'll get started. So over the weekend, I did a retreat at Fall Creek Falls and we rented out this small room that had all the windows where you could bring the outdoors in, which was nice because it was a rainy day. And luckily I knew it was gonna rain. So I had taken a lot of extra tools with me so that we could do more meditations indoors. Um, I brought lights so that we could create a spiral labyrinth so we could do a walking meditation. I brought in my sound bowl so that we could do a sound meditation. Uh, Christy Robinson brought in um, her pottery and did a beautiful tea ceremony, which I had never done before. I think I'd only seen it on the movie Karate Kid before. And hers was a little bit different. It was Japanese based. Um, but it was very earthy, it was very contemplative, it was very mindful. Anyway, so we also did um, the Magic Four, which I'm not planning on doing the Magic Four today, uh, but before we got into the Magic Four, we had chairs available in the room and we hadn't brought any props like blocks. So basically this inspiration for using the chair today is rolling over from the weekend. So I hope you enjoy it. We're gonna stack um, ourselves accordingly so that we're sitting towards the edge of the seat, whatever chair you're on, and you're wanting to have the feet flat on the floor. So if you're really petite and you feel like there's a long slope between your hips and your knees going downward, you may wanna bring a bolster or a blanket to set the feet on so that the thighs are more level and not cutting off the circulation. But we're gonna roll the shoulders up and back and we're gonna flip the hands open right at that hip crease or the upper groove of the thighs. And as you place your hands here, notice it can be a helpful little prop for the heart center. And then we'll go ahead and close the eyes. And once you close your eyes, feel your feet touching down. And notice if this is a good start for you, because oftentimes we're sitting cross-legged on the floor and that can be challenging for a lot of people. So this may feel more accessible, more gentle to your knees and hips. And you may find it's more easeful to keep the spine elongated. Once your feet are planted down, bring that awareness up through the legs, feeling that 90 degree angle and sensing your sits bones rooting down on the seat. Stacking each vertebra and lifting up through the top of the head. Closing the lids of the eyes and beginning some breath control. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Opening up the airway. And 
perhaps even feeling that wind being pulled through the throat. And if you constrict the back of the throat, it beca can become the ujjaya breath. So it becomes audible to listen to. On your next inhale, gently open up the lids of the eyes and go ahead and bring the arms up alongside your ears, stretching through the side body, reaching up through the fingertips. And then on the exhalation, we're going to hinge forward from the hips. We're stretching the body forward and out, forward and out, forward and out. And we're gonna hover right over the legs. And if you grip your feet into the flooring, and keep your knees narrow, you're gonna find it will activate the thighs. And then on your next out breath, go ahead and spill the hands alongside the feet. Bow your head beyond the knees and just let your neck go. It's okay if your belly, chest or both want to rest on your lap. This is a form of child's pose from the chair. We'll gently lean the head over towards one shoulder. And then gently roll it across to the other. Go at a super slow speed here, rolling the head to one shoulder. and then rolling across to the other. Now drape the head back down, slide your hands on top of your knees, pushing down through your palms and slowly rising back up. Once you rise up, you're gonna heel toe the feet apart. And once you heel toe the feet apart, it's like you're in a squat. And we're gonna lean forward and prop the elbows to the knees. Now, have your neck in line with your spine and just look down. If you have issues with vertigo, you may wanna stay here. If you don't have that problem, then go ahead and send the hands down and lower the torso so that the crown of the head's facing the floor. Let your thighs and hips Continue to roll open so you're getting the benefits of the hip stretch as well as being inverted. Bringing the blood flow to the eyes, the brain, the face. Now go ahead and walk the fingertips forward, straighten out through your arms, lengthen through your back, come halfway up basically, still looking down, evening out that blood flow. And again, focusing on sensation you're receiving through the inner thighs and hips. Stack your hands back on top of the knees and back your way out. And once you back your way out, you're gonna bring the feet back in front. And we're going to the left ankle over the right knee. Now, if that's difficult to manage, if you lean back and then prop the foot up, it's a little easier to get there. And then once you have this set in place, check in with this knee. If it needs additional support, you're just gonna cuff your hand up underneath and give it a little elevation. Otherwise, stay long through the spine. You can hold on to the seat of the chair and gently hinge forward and down. Make sure you're pushing down to the mound of that right big toe. If you have more open hips and flexibility, you're welcome 
to spill over like in a ragdoll position. And then just check in, you know, day to day, because even though most of the time we can maybe do that, there may be a moment where your body says, no, thank you. And that's what I just sensed in my own body. So I backed up. So notice how this is not only about the hips. Notice where you may feel it in the left leg, also in the buttock region. Think about clearing things out with each exhalation. And on the next inhale, gently come up, affirming, I rise above the past and the future to this moment of now. And then we'll prop that foot back to the floor and lift the other one up, ankle bone to thigh bone, generally close to the knee. And again, checking in here. If you need to lean back to get the foot in place, that's okay. Elongate the spine, hold the edge of the chair and gently hinge down. Checking in to see and to sense what's happening on this side. Propping the knee up if it needs some assistance. Letting go completely if that's in your realm of possibility. So what I discovered earlier today, I think I've told you guys lately, I've been holding in my left hip and I've been really working on releasing that. And all of a sudden today, it's piping up in my right hip. And I know why, because my father had a fall and broke his hip and uh, landed on his head. He had to have a rod put in the right hip down through his thigh. Sounds brutal, right? Uh, but anyway, obviously over the weekend, I was worried, I was stressed, I was constantly being updated on any progress as well as the surgery. And now he's in recovery. So I know this right hip is all about my dad because it's the right side, it's the masculine side, and it's something new. All right, let's inhale, slowly begin to back our way out of that. And then we'll lower that foot back down to the floor. All right, from here, bring your hands to prayer position at your heart. Inhale, extend your arms out shoulder height, whooshing out through the heel of the hands. And then flip the fingertips down and stretch through the back of the arms and the back of your wrists. All right, one more. Inhale, flexing the wrist, fingertips turn up. And then flipping the fingertips down and then relax your arms. All right, we're gonna stand up now. Now I'm gonna come over to this chair. The first thing we're gonna do is stand in front of it, just a few inches away from the seat, and then elevate the arms up to frame the face. And then as you exhale, you can take your arms to the sides, but eventually down to prop on the chair. And you want to try to stack the shoulders over the wrists. And then from here, if you want to bend the elbows to hinge down more, you can. You might be able to even rest the head on the chair and let the arms drape. So you want to feel pretty evenly balanced on the soles of the feet. I felt like there was a little bit more going into my heels, so I had to reset a little. I'm just going to warm up the back of the legs here. Uttanasana, standing forward fold. And then affirming as you hold. Nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back. And 
Right, from here, we're going to return the hands back onto the seat, straighten out through the arms, and then this is the point where we're going to step back into a plank. Now, in plank, you're on the balls of the feet, you're weight bearing in your hands, but it's much easier than being more parallel to the floor. All right, on the out breath, we're going to push back land on the heels of the feet into this variation of downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, really stretch through the underside of your arms, power back through your seat, push back through your thighs, and let your head drape between the arms. Now open up that channel of breath, make it nice and clear. So there's no obstruction on the in-breath or the out-breath. On your next inhale, we're gonna step the right foot forward. Now when you bring the right foot forward, hide the toes from your view underneath the seat lunge into that knee and be here. So it's just like a lunge if our hands were on blocks, except we're gonna come up to the taller version. So if you can float your arms up overhead, if you still need the chair for balance, use it. Pull up through the navel center. Balance here and breathe. On your next exhalation, let's sweep the hands back down to the seat, but we're going to reposition this right foot. We're going to pick up that right foot and we're going to take it to the outside of that front leg of the chair. And we're going to see if we can sink to the forearms. Now dropping to the forearms, this should remind you of lizard pose. Try to keep that right knee kind of pulling in towards your right side body. Come back to your breath. Last one. Reset on your hands, and then we're going to spring that right foot back to form our downward facing dog. Holding and breathing here, bringing traction into the spine, bringing a sense of calmness to the mind, affirming as we hold, calmness is radiating throughout every fiber of my being. On the next inhale, we're gonna step the left foot through. Again, hiding the toes as we lunge the knee. And you can be here looking out, or if you can balance without using the prop, bring the arms up overhead. A form of crescent lunge. It's easier to maintain if you set your eyes on one place before you. Exhale, we're gonna bring the hands down. We're gonna relocate that front foot to the outside of the leg. And then see if it's possible to sink down to forearms. You can obviously stay stacked on straight arms and push down through the mound of that front big toe, and that will keep the knee kind of hugged in towards you for lizard.
When we exit this pose, instead of going to down dog like we did the previous side, we're going to come back to plank. So we're going to reset on the hands, step the left foot to join the right, means the heels are off the floor. And we're trying to create a long line from the head to the heels. Exhale, this time press back again to downward facing dog. On your next in breath, we're going to step the right foot forward. And we're going to drop the left foot. We're going to square the hips by turning the left hip towards the edge of the chair. And this is our version of pyramid pose. Now we can also, I like this version, where we stack the hands onto the back of the chair and then bow the head. But you may not have that flexibility because this is pretty, uh, it had to be pretty flexible even to be here. So this one may be better where we started. And I know some people want to go even lower. So if you wanted to bring the forearms down to the edge of the chair, you could also take that variation. Now, even if you can take the hands to the floor, I wouldn't suggest it today because sometimes we need to remember sometimes backing away and approaching a pose um, by not going fully to the edge, there's something to gain and benefit from being here. So I would suggest using the prop today, making it a new experience or different experience. All right, we're gonna relunge that knee. We're gonna lift that back heel. We're gonna prop onto the hands. We're taking plank and then pushing back. Downward facing dog. And we're gonna set up for that second side. So the left foot steps through. And then as we straighten the leg, we're going to spin the right heel in and down, but roll the right hip forward. So again, this is pyramid pose. You're in it. Or stretch the arms out to the backside. Or perhaps take the forearms down but try to avoid the temptation of taking it any lower than this. Maybe emphasizing the exhale. Breathe, stacking on to the palms, lunging that front knee, lifting the back heel off the mat, turning the toes to face the front, stepping into your plank. So you are strengthening here, even though it's not as difficult. And then push back down dog. Now we're gonna walk the feet forward not all the way, but where the hips are over the ankles, the shoulders are over the hands. And then of course, if you want to lower the head and release your arms, making it into a more restorative variation of Uttanasana. And this is how we started that sun salutation. Practice just a few more breaths. And 
and then eventually reach back the hands to the seat. Straighten out through your arms. Plug the feet down into the floor and then come all the way up to Urdhva Hasasana. And exhale, bring hands down to the heart. So I'm going to sit on the seat of the chair sideways with the right leg. Now, I don't know if you can see this very well, but the left foot is going to step back. The toes are tucked. And then I'm going to align head over shoulder, shoulders over hips. The right hand's going to hold the back of the chair. So it's like I'm in a lunge, but I'm not having to worry about support for that back knee. This is going to open up the front of the thigh, the front of the hip. And now lean forward to untuck the back foot and just be here where it's not as engaged and just let gravity lengthen it down. I have a pretty good grip on this chair so I'm not falling off the edge. You're getting a little bicep work here as well. One more breath. All right, now we're gonna step that left foot forward to join the right. Um, if you have a block, you don't have to use a block for this, so don't worry if it's not around, but this is helpful for keeping the legs engaged and when we go into a twist, it's going to minimize any of this um, sliding action and it'll keep it more stable. But before we do that, hold the block between the legs, take this right arm to the back of the chair, relift the left arm, and we're just going to curve. We're just going to take a side bend here. Inhale back up. And then as we exhale, we're going to bring the left hand to the back of the chair. Now, this is where you want to squeeze that block. Hold on to the back of the chair like you're holding a steering wheel. Pull upward through the shaft of the spine. And then exhale, continue to rotate to your right. Your choice whether or not you want to continue to turn from your neck. Let your shoulders collapse away from your ears. Stay with your breath to replenish your lungs. So I didn't finish reading the article today, but I know there's a lot of uh, volcanic eruptions happening in the world. And I saw a headline this morning, I'm gonna go back and read it after this class, that there's three different continents receiving a lot of volcanic ash right now. And I believe one of those is in Mexico. So let's close the eyes. Just imagine those pockets or places on the planet that are having this ash falling down from the sky and how they're having to be cautious with their lungs, being outdoors, and then affirm mentally within. I radiate my love, goodwill, and compassion to soul friends everywhere. And then gently release that twist. 
Now, when you release the twist, I want you to turn your body. Let the block go a second so that you're sitting normally in the chair. And I want you to prop, if you're a lady, left hand over the right. If you're a man joining us later, right hand over the left. Close the eyes. And then we're gonna do that same sequence to the other side. Now that you've had a moment to check in, we're gonna bring this block on over to the other side. And the left hand is gonna take a hold of the back of the chair. The left leg is going to be draped over the edge of the seat. And the right foot's gonna step back, toes tucked. And then align head over shoulder, shoulders over hips. And then untuck the back foot and just let it hang free. And then let's step the right foot through. We'll take the block in between the knees again. We're still holding the back of the chair with the left arm, but the right arm's gonna lift overhead and we're gonna take the side stretch. And then he'll come up. Exhale, bring the right hand down, reset the left hand, and squeeze that block so your hips don't slide, and start to turn to your left. E inhale, come back to the shaft of the spine, open it up, and then as you exhale, rotate a little more. And then with your hands gripping, your shoulders may be creeping up towards the ears, so just create that space again. Here. I radiate my love, goodwill, and compassion to soul friends everywhere. Shoot, excuse me. Come out of the twist if you have to sneeze. <laughs> And then on your next out breath, gently remove the hands from the back of the seat. Turn your body so that you're sitting properly in the chair. Create that mudra for meditation. Close your eyes briefly. Ready, we're coming up to stand. Now, you may not have to turn your chair, but I'm wanting to turn it this way so that I can give you a better viewpoint. So if the seat of the chair is facing off to your left, your left foot will come up where the toes are kind of in line with that front leg, okay? And then what you'll do is you'll create a landing line from your outer hip through the outer ankle and from the inner hip to the inner ankle. Your right foot is gonna step up on the seat of the chair. And then you can balance by using the backside before lifting the arms up overhead. Now this is gonna be a pretty deep hip opening. 
Okay, so the first thing we do is make sure the landing lines through the straight leg, right foot's propped up, and then we're gonna hinge forward like we did earlier, right? The tailbone's scooting back, but the fingertips are shooting forward and out. And this is gonna help to lengthen the back, but then go ahead and set the hands to the corner, right? And this may be enough, right? The mistake that I often see is this foot being out of place of the straight leg and it being way back like this. It's not gonna have the same effect, okay? So think bone stacking, joint stacking. If, however, you feel like eh, kind of a little bit more, you can walk the hands beyond to that opposite leg out in front and then bow your head. This second part, again, isn't necessary. It does take it much deeper. So pay attention to your knee, to your hip, to your back, to your limitations. Back away if it's prohibiting your breath. Again, we want that breath to be a clear, open channel. Then we'll bring the hands back up to the corner. Pause here. Lengthen the arms out in front again. We're going to come up the same way. Notice when the arms looked up how you get more engaged in that right leg. And that's gonna to help to build you up. And then bring the right hand down to the back of the chair, lower that foot, and then we can just walk over to the other side. So now the right toes are gonna to come up right to that front leg of the chair. The left foot's gonna prop on top. And then, you know, you're holding the chair until you're ready to balance and freestyle. So the hands are lifting up overhead. All right, exhale, we're pushing the thigh bone back, the sits bones back as the trunk moves forward. Bone stacking, joint stacking like before. And then casually bring the hands down to the seat. All right, and this may be enough. You can stay here, or you can walk the hands down that leg, bowing to the inside of that front knee. We'll re-stack the hands to the corner. We'll lengthen the arms out in front. Push down through the left foot, slowly climb all the way up. And then exhale, hands to the heart. All right, now let's go ahead and turn the chair this way again. We're gonna come on down to the floor. And this is where you can determine again, maybe you have a softer surface, a chair that's kind of about the same height. You're welcome to use that if you'd like. Otherwise, we're gonna scoot up and send the legs up. Of course, that also depends on the back of the chair. These have a really deep seat, so it works on the blue. But in the cart table chair, I have an opening that I can send the feet through. You may be limited with that depending on the design of your kitchen or dining chair. 
You'll just see how it feels. And the first thing I want you to do is close your eyes. And I want you to feel the weight dropping down into that large base bone in your low back, what we call the sacrum. Now for me personally, when I go through a lot of stress, my body literally starts to contort and my pelvis can twist, right? So occasionally I have to go get a chiropractic adjustment for that. And so when you close your eyes, I want you to detect from your own sensory information that you're receiving, does the right side or the left side of your low back feel more sedated or heavier or more rooted than the other? And if that's the case, it should be, or could potentially be indicating there's a misalignment here. This is something we call instant Maui. And it helps to decrease tension around the tailbone, as well as the low back. This area that we often consider part of our foundation. Now, remember when we were doing the hip opening and sitting in the chair, we brought the ankle to the knee. We're actually going to do that as well here, but we're gonna change it up a little bit. So if you cross the left ankle over to the right knee, right? this is even one of the segments in the magic four. However, we're gonna do something a little different. I want you to see if it's possible to take a hold of that foot that's propped and slide the foot lower down the thigh bone in the direction of your hip. Obviously that does require more flexion for the knee. So ensure that the knee is corresponding in a cooperative way. It's almost like we're going towards a half lotus, if that's helpful. Close your eyes. Relax as much as you can and breathe. And then we'll slide the left calf back to the seat. Rest for a moment in instant Maui. And notice the difference it's made in your body. So 
So now let's cross the right ankle to the left knee. But again, we're not gonna stay here. We're gonna see if it's possible to slide the foot lower down the leg towards the hip. Now, you're not going all the way to half lotus. It's just kind of in that direction. It's a similar shape. The hands can remain on the belly. But I suggest closing the eyes so that you can really move into the internal round and feel the effect. Slide the right foot back over the edge of the chair. Let it reset. And then we've got time to build up for another pose for Shavasana. So if you slide your knees in and roll over, we have not done this for a long time, or at least I haven't done it with you in a long time. And it's using a bolster to stack like this. And you can even use a blanket for under your head and neck or build it over your body for more warmth. And so this way, it's, it's not as much as legs up the wall, but it's a little bit more than legs up the slide. So we've got the elevation here. It allows for a bend in the knees. Relax your shoulders. And in the Sri Vidya tradition in India, it's always been said to meditate on the third eye to enter into the lotus of the heart. And so often when we close the eyes, the muscles of the eyes just relax. But we want to keep the inner gaze towards the third eye, the midpoint of the brow. This can help us to stay awake and alert. And I love that they've always said this in the Sri Vidya tradition because we often think the third eye is the intuitive place of the mind. But modern science is now saying the true intuitive center is the heart. So it's the heart that connects and feels it. It's the gut that gives us the inner feeling of it. And then it's the prefrontal lobe of the brain that gives us the idea of it or the vision of it.
So meditating this way can enhance our intuition. So let's meditate here for today's practice in Shavasana.
and slowly slide the feet down, which will bend the knees in. You can cradle the legs. Affirming, I release any and all scattered forces to rise up and away into the sky. Hopefully that happened naturally as you were meditating at the mind's eye. Now let's roll over to one side of the body. Come on up for a seat. Sitting with eyes closed. But hopefully feeling like your mind and heart are wide open. Drawing the hands together. Oh, peace, peace, peace. Namaste.